Hey there, friend. Heather Creekmore here. I'm glad you're listening to the Compared to Who show today because today we're going to get real and we're going to get a little raw too. Oh, friends, what do you do when you really just want to be thinner? Now, I know there's a handful of listeners that are saying, I don't want to be thinner. I need to gain weight. Heather, help me. (laughs) This is not my issue. You can really apply this to anything. If you want to be taller, uh, if you want to be wealthier, if you want to be more toned, if you want to have better skin, it doesn't matter. Substitute your body desire here. But for the sake of illustration, today we're going to talk about what to do when you just really want to be thinner. How do we handle it? How do we cope? I mean, if you're like me and you have an eating disorder, disordered eating background, body image issues for decades, when this drive to be thinner comes on, it comes on strong. I mean, it is a persistent little barky dog, and I have one of those, (laughs) that is nipping at your heels or scratching at your leg over and over and over and over again, acting as if it will only be satisfied when you do the things that you're supposed to do to try to get the body that you want. Before we go any further, I do have to add some disclaimers. Some of you are saying, I want to be thinner because I want to be healthier. And I would encourage you just to separate those two things in your mind today as you listen. My question for you would be do a heart check. Because if your doctor told you, yeah, you're perfectly healthy, your blood work looks good, everything looks great, their only concern was about your BMI, which there's all kinds of data debunking BMI. I've done episodes on that before. Go look it up, (laughs) the veracity of the BMI test. There's all kinds of info on that. But if your doctor told you you were completely healthy, If you knew you were doing things to try to keep your body healthy, but you didn't wear the size that you wish you wore, would that be enough? So that's when I want to frame the health conversation around here. And I'm not going to get into this again. That's just your kind of blanket disclaimer going into today's episode. And I also want to acknowledge that for some of you, this desire or longing literally feels like life or death. And so my swimming pool example that you'll hear in a few minutes may sound way too frivolous. Let me just say right here and now that I see you, I hear you, but I still want to encourage you to consider the whole of what I'm saying today about our longings and really the message I don't talk about today, but contentment, right? Some of us are facing health challenges that no matter what we do, we can't fix them. I think about Nick Vojevic, who I reference all the time, but he's had to live without arms or legs. He may have a desire for those things. He may desire that his body was different, but he didn't let those longings stand in the way of being used by God. So no matter where you're at today, I think there's a message for you in here if you don't get too hung up on what I'm not saying. So that's my disclaimer for today. Hey, how's your body image? If you're struggling, and you may be because you're listening to this show, here's what I want you to consider. Will you join us for Lent, which starts next week? February 14th is the official beginning of the Lent season. The season is the 40 days before Easter. Will you go on a 40-day journey with me and many women from around the world, literally, who want body image freedom? Will you consider grabbing... The 40-Day Body Image Workbook, you can get it on Amazon, Baker Books, ChristianBook.com, Walmart.com, Target.com, wherever you buy stuff, you can buy this book. So grab a copy of the book and then sign up for the 40 days. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to meet once a week. I just opened a brand new Thursday, 1230 time. But if you signed up already, probably signed up for the Tuesday, 630 p.m. time. Both of those times are central. But now you can choose to do it in the evening or in the afternoon. But we're going to meet once a week. We're going to kick off Tuesday night, February 13th. Lent and your reading will begin Wednesday, February 14th. 
And then we're going to meet once a week all through Lent. So it'll be seven meetings total. And it costs $49. So think about it like this. It's like seven bucks a meeting for group coaching, which is just dirt cheap. So join us and we're going to just go through the content. We're going to talk about what's in there. We're going to talk about the things that you find hard. You're going to be able to bring your questions. And I'm also hopeful that I'm going to be able to put you in a group with other women so that you can, at the end of every session, really get to know some other women around the world that you could journey with and stay in touch with. So that's my hope for these. Uh, it's it's going to be a good time. It's a great opportunity. I'm also going to encourage you to go off of social media for the Lent period. Most of us are like, I don't have time to do extra work. I don't have time to read. And then you get your screen time report and you're like, oh, really? I spend an hour a day on Instagram. I spend two hours a day on YouTube. Like friends, I think we do have time. We just have to switch where we're giving our time. And if you want body image freedom, there's nothing better you could do than to give up your socials for 40 days, just 40 days. If you have to do them for work, there's a way around it. Don't don't make it black and white, but give up your socials for 40 days and dig into the content of this book, not by yourself, because shame is healed in community, but with other women. Bring your questions, bring your struggles, feel heard, be seen, be known, and find freedom. Friend, I, I want this for you. So go sign up today. It's not too late. Even if you're listening to this after the first week, it's still not too late. You can still get six sessions in. So go find out more, improvebodyimage.com. There's a menu on the far right side that says more, and you can find the direct link to 40 Day Body Image Reading Challenge, or you can find it under the book. If you find the book on my website, improvebodyimage.com, you can find a link there. But I want you to join. Be a part of this. There's no age requirement. There's no size requirement. Come as you are, and we'll all grow and learn together. Welcome to Compare to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compare to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Okay, friends. So here's the real deal. Sometimes, some seasons, some days, some weeks, some months, some years, you're just going to start thinking about the way you wish your body could be. You're going to have thoughts like, I wish I could be thinner. And for some of you, those thoughts are going to accompany some grief. And I've done other podcast episodes on grief, so I'll link to those in the show notes. So go check those out. There's going to be some grieving involved, and there's a chapter in the 40-Day Body Image Workbook that explains this grieving process. So if you haven't gotten the book, go grab it, then do the 40-Day Challenge with us. You're seeing a pattern here, <laughs> I know, but, but I want you to be real about the grief that's there. But here's what I really want you to know, and I've got three main points for you today, and the first one is this. It's okay to feel this way. Don't feel ashamed because you wish you were thinner. Don't feel like that's any sort of, I'm going to say, slight to your body image journey. Don't let the enemy tell you that you're not progressing, that you're not getting free because you still wish you were thinner. Hear me loud and clear. It's okay that you feel that way. It's just a feeling. You know, and as I think about it, there's lots of things that I wish for that I don't really get hung up on. And I think that's the difference between walking in freedom and walking in bondage when it comes to body image issues. Like for example, I really wish I had a pool in my backyard. I live in Austin, Texas. It is hot like nine months of the year here. 
So it's a really good place to have a pool. And also I have four teenagers and they're always going to people's houses with pools in the summer because those are the people who can entertain better in the summer because they actually have something that people can do outside because most of the time we don't want to be outside in Austin, Texas in the summer. And so I wish I had a swimming pool. And as you can hear, I have a really good, solid reason for wanting a swimming pool. And it's really not even a selfish reason. Like, it's a a generous, I would say, hospitable reason for wanting this thing. And yet, I can go on with my life. I don't wake up every day like, oh, I wish I had a swimming pool. Oh, what an awful day because I don't have a swimming pool. You know, oh, if only I had a swimming pool. Like, this is not a thought that plagues my brain like most days. I mean, some days in the summer, you know, I'll have the thought, I don't know, once a day, twice a day. But it's nowhere near the way I get bombarded with thoughts around body image. And I think the difference is this, right? There's a lot of things that I wish for that I don't get and I don't get hung up on because the wish is simply that. It's just a wish. It's not a longing. Now, longings are kind of tricky. And especially in our culture, right? Like we're kind of told to follow our hearts, which I would say is another way to say, follow your longing. We're told that like our desires will like tell us something and lead us somewhere. And that's like our ultimate dream is just following our desires, like that kind of (laughs) hocus pocus, if you will. Like I don't really think that's biblical. But I do think biblically, It's okay to recognize that we do have longings. The challenge becomes, why? Why do I have this longing? And and like I said, it's okay to feel this way because it is just a feeling and a longing. And so my question for you is this. Can you be curious about why this is something you desire so much. So just ask yourself that question. Why? Why do I desire to be thin so much? Why do I desire clearer skin so much? Why do I desire fewer wrinkles so much? Why do I desire to be younger and look like I did when I was 20 so much? Why do I have this desire? And exploring the why is something that if you and I were going to be in coaching together, this is something we would work on together. So if you want to do coaching, I'm always available for that. But figuring out your why is really important. And that kind of connects to my second point for you today, which we'll get to right after this quick break. I think when you answer the question, why do I really want this thing? It naturally leads to another question. And that question is, what is it that I really want? It's important that we understand our longing under our longing. For example, do I really want a thin body? Or is it that I really want to feel like I'm more in control because my life feels totally out of control right now? Do I really want a thin body? Or am I looking for some sort of insurance policy that I'll never face sickness that makes me uncomfortable or debilitates me? Do I really want a thin body? Or do I just want to be accepted by people at church, by by friends, by people at work? Do I really want a thin body? Or do I just want admiration from people? Do I love the applause of people when they look at me with a look of admiration, when they envy me even? And this is something that's really difficult for us to explore on our own a lot of times because we can trick ourselves into thinking that we are the most benevolent creatures on the planet. And so a lot of times when I'm doing coaching, it does take a little time before we're able to answer these questions in a genuine and honest way. Not that anyone's ever trying to lie to me, but I think these secret longings under our longings are hidden in the recesses of our hearts. 
And I think about how David prayed to search my heart, oh God, find any wicked ways in me. I think these longings are hidden in there deep. And it takes more than just a quick five minute like journaling session to bring them out for a lot of us. Now, maybe you can bring it out quick. (laughs) And if you can, that's awesome. But I would just take some time with this question. Why do I really want to be thinner? What is it that I really long for? And then I'd encourage you just to be honest, right? And in this way, I mean being honest in a being realist sort of way, right? So let's go through the longings under the longings that I already mentioned. Would being thinner actually bring you more control if everything else in your life feels out of control? It wouldn't. And candidly, I think this is the one I'm struggling with right now. I have four almost teenagers. Well, they're teenagers except for the youngest. He's 12 and a half, so we're going to count him too. We are trying to do college visits. We just moved my mother-in-law into a retirement facility, which meant cleaning out our house, moving her. We're trying to sell the house. Like January, you all, was one long Monday for me of just crazy schedule that I didn't have a lot of control over. And you know what's been bugging me most of January? It's this nagging, like, if you could just lose weight, then everything would be better. But that's not really true. Weight loss wouldn't change my schedule one bit. Weight loss wouldn't make the, the, the struggle of dealing with aging parents and teenage kids and college visits and emotions and feelings and all the things that come with teenagers. It wouldn't change any of that. So I, why do I believe that it would? Let's tackle the second one. Do I want some sort of insurance policy that I'll never face a sickness that will make me uncomfortable or debilitate me? (laughs) I can eat perfectly. I can exercise perfectly. And again, that's so subjective. I hate to even phrase it like that, right? But having a thin body does not guarantee me that I will never face sickness or anything uncomfortable. Our bodies are decaying. Our bodies are aging. Boy, that's an an upper, isn't it? (laughs) Sorry about that. But let's just get real. I have a limited amount of ability to control how my body ages and what I face as it ages. For most of us, we recognize strong genetic tendencies towards different ailments. I know my people, we have endocrine issues and we have heart issues. And so I know I have to be on the lookout for blood pressure, heart, stroke stuff. And I also have to be on the lookout for diabetes, endocrine system stuff. But I also know that doing everything perfectly, food and exercise wise, although maybe there are studies out there that show I can ward it off, fend it off a little bit, maybe, but I've not seen that happen in real life. Some people escape it, some people don't. And yes, I can choose behaviors that might seem to help me escape it, but I don't have a promise that I will. It's hard. It's hard to understand that being thin doesn't protect me. I have mentioned these so many times, but I have very thin friends who have had hip replacements, who've gotten diagnosed with diabetes, type 2 diabetes. I have thin friends that have high blood pressure. I have thin friends that have faced cancer diagnoses. Like there's no body type that inoculates you from the decay and aging processes of our bodies. The third question I asked was, do I want acceptance from people? And oh, this is a big struggle for me too. I want you to see me and like me. I want you to see me and approve of me. But I know reality here too is that I could look model perfect and you could still see me and criticize the way I look. Just ask any 
<laughs> the Halloween celebrity who is on Instagram, right? We see these celebrities and models get criticized all the time. If I really want acceptance or admiration from people, there is no body type, no body size or shape that can guarantee that I'll always get that. So this is why we have to be honest with ourselves. Again, let me pose the question to you. Why do I really long to be thinner? As I think some more about my answer, I think part of the challenge for me is I am tempted to believe that I would feel better about myself if I were thinner. It's like a direct link to my confidence and how I see my value and worth. If I were thinner, then I would feel better. And I did a whole podcast episode on that uh, last year. I think it was a really helpful way to think about this whole concept of feeling better because I talk to women all the time who are like, I just want to feel better. I just want to feel better. There's nothing wrong with me wanting to feel better. And as I read stuff online, it's like, of course, you know, chase that opportunity to feel better. If you feel better, then you do it. You should do what it takes to feel better. And we get so hung up on feeling better about ourselves And I wonder if that's not the wrong thing to chase, my friends. Because see, whenever me feeling better about my body, which is what we're talking about specifically here, right, leads to more confidence, I have to peel back the layers and say, wait, then what am I taking confidence in? Am I taking confidence in my body size? Am I taking pride in the way I've been able to control or shrink or manipulate my body? And am I seeing myself as more valuable or more worthy because I've been able to do this thing to my body? Like, is that what, I'm gonna use some Bible language here, but is that what I've made my crown? (laughs) Is, Is that what I've made my glory? And I think about what's going to happen when we get to heaven. We got to lay all of our crowns down, right? Because none of these things that we did here on earth to try to give ourselves glory, to make ourselves feel important or, or to accomplish things, all of these worldly accomplishments are going to fade in an instant when Jesus comes back or when we die and go to heaven and see him, right? So I cannot link my confidence, my feel better to my body, You know, real life example here, I was invited to do something public next month. And my first thought, friends, and, you know, I've been honest, like, I think body image freedom is knowing what to do when you have the thoughts, knowing how to fight this fight, right? And so I hope you're not shocked to hear me say, but my first thought was, is there any way I can lose pounds before I go do that thing? (laughs) And I was able to talk myself off the ledge pretty quickly. But as I think through my thought processes there, I'm like, what what am I thinking when I say that to myself? What am I thinking when I ask that question? Is there any way I can lose pounds before I go do that thing? And here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that people would respect me more or they would like me more or they would enjoy watching me more if I had a different body, if I looked different, if I were thinner. And then to take this to another level, what I'm doing in that is I'm relegating my value and my contribution to this thing I was invited to do. I'm relegating that to one thing, my body, to what I look like. And the truth is, I'm not being asked to do that thing because of the way I look. It's not a modeling job. <laughs> like, like, there's no way they're asking me to do this because of how I look or my body size. They're asking me to do this thing because of my competency, my expertise, my experience. <laughs> but in my brain, I dismiss all of that. I dismiss all of those legitimate reasons why they've invited me to do this thing. And I make it all about my body. <laughs> Like, if I could be thinner, then it would go better. If I could be thinner, then they would like me more. Oh, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, but I bet you do it too. We think that our bodies are the most valuable thing we have to offer. 
And yet the people inviting us to things, the people who love us, the people who pursue friendship with us, the people who want to spend time with us, they're not spending time with us, pursuing us, loving us, (laughs) being our friends, asking us to do professional, you know, gigs like in the case that I'm talking about. They're not giving us jobs. They're not hiring us. They're not advancing or promoting us. They're not doing this because of the way we look. Like, unless you're a model, okay, (laughs) and you get it fast. But for most of us, they're not doing it because of how we look. They're doing it because of all the other things. Now, I want to tread gently here because I know that the opposite might also be true, right? There's all kinds of data out there that if you're more attractive, you don't get the actual speeding ticket, you just get a warning and that more attractive people get promoted easier. So I get that too. And I'm sorry for the hurt that causes. And I'm sorry for any ways that you may have experienced that kind of prejudice, that kind of bias, that kind of, let's call it discrimination for your body size or the way you look. And that hurts. But my point remains, what makes you, you is not your body size. And guess what? If you've been despised and rejected for the way your body looks, you're in good company because Jesus was too. In fact, scripture tells us that there was nothing attractive physically about him. He emptied himself of that kind of glory. He never tried for physical glory. So you're in good company. He gets it. And he wants you to know you're not alone. But don't let any kind of discrimination you faced around the way you look stop you from being you or stop you from loving others hard. Don't let that discrimination make you put up walls where you keep others out because then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where people don't like you maybe because the way you look and you're not liking them back. Love hard. That's what we're commanded to do. And don't forget what's valuable about you. It's Jesus in you and the way he made you. Our personalities, our giftings, our skills, our experience, our life experience. That's what we have to offer not our bodies, not looking pretty. God gave us something to do. We need to do it. And beyond that, we have value because of Jesus, right? Like, I mean, really, like I said, all my skills, expertise, intelligence, like that's just all, as Paul would say, dung. My resume is not important. It's Christ in me. That's my testimony. That's what I get to boast in. So every time I'm tempted to be like, oh, I need a better body for, I really have to ask myself, what is underneath that longing? Why do I believe I need a better body for fill in the blank? And my third and final point for you today, friend, is it comes down to trusting God and asking him to make my desires, to make my longings, his desires, his longings for me. I've been listening to Tim Keller preach through the Proverbs. It's on his Gospel in Life uh, podcast now. And it's really interesting. He starts every episode by kind of explaining that there are some things in life that just aren't moral issues. There's things in life that the Bible doesn't lay out. Do this. Don't do this. Right? We just get to decide. But in an episode I was listening to this week, Keller was talking about how the best way for us to decide anything, even if it's not a moral issue, the best way for us to decide is from a place where we are so fully surrendered to the Lord that my desires are aligning with his, right? That that I am listening to his heartbeat. And although I'm never going to be perfect at making his heartbeat my heartbeat, I'm getting closer and closer to that so that when I desire something, I can feel whether or not it's a desire that aligns with his desire for me. And so the question becomes here, what is it that I desire most? Do I really want to be like Jesus? I had the opportunity earlier this week to hang out with Gary Thomas, who wrote the book Sacred Marriage, and he's written like, I don't know, 20 other books as well. So you've probably seen or read some of them. But Gary's thesis for several of his books is, in the marriage one in particular, is marriage designed to make you happy or holy? 
And that's a thesis that kind of wrecked my life right before we got married because I was like, no, I want to get married to be happy. Holiness, uh. And I've asked this question on the show before too, right? Do you want to be hot? Do you want a good, better body? Or do you want to be holy? And so as we think about making our desires match God's desires, I think we have to peel back to that same question. Do I desire holiness or do I desire comfort, security, happiness, acceptance, control? Do I desire more of God's kingdom? Do I want my life to look more like Jesus? Or do I really want to just match what culture says a good life is and not have to stress about anything else? You know, all of us are guilty of this, I believe. Like we all have this wrestling match inside to believe, is it God's way or is it the world's way? Do I go with culture because that seems pretty easy and that's kind of everywhere? Or do I go with this countercultural way, biblical way that God suggests? And I think every time we're tempted with, I want to be thinner, we have to go back to that question. What do I really long for in light of God's kingdom? And if it is, and and no condemnation, shame, or blame here, friend, because I've done it, been there too. But if it's that, I just really want to fit into this culture. I just really don't want to have this issue. I really just want to be thin and look great. And then I can go serve Jesus like with the other side of my life. Like if that's what's going on, then we have to step back and ask ourselves, what are we believing? Question one, what am I believing about this life? Am I believing that this life is the end game? I use this illustration in my book, The Burden of Better, how a comparison-free life leads to joy, peace, and rest. But I talk about how when I was in England, oh, 25 years ago, uh, we had a really horrible tour guide there. And the tour guide had told us that we were going to be there in time for the Queen's birthday parade. And so we are there in London, like standing along one of the most famous streets in London, like waiting for this parade. And there's no one else out there standing. Like it doesn't feel like anyone else in London knows that it's the Queen's birthday parade day. And... (laughs) Then all of a sudden, like this one, like kind of classic, like horse and carriage goes by with like a couple police officers in it. And we're told that we weren't actually there to watch the parade. We were there to watch the practice dress rehearsal for the parade. There's a big difference between the parade and the practice dress rehearsal for the parade. The practice dress rehearsal for the parade is not very exciting. There's nothing to see here, folks. And the parade, although I wasn't there for it, I saw it on television, looked pretty amazing. And so the question is, do I believe that this life is the parade? Because in truth, friend, this life is just the practice warm up for the parade. This is just the dress rehearsal. And if I put everything in to making this life be the parade, am I storing up treasures in heaven? Or am I so busy storing up treasures here that I don't really have time to store up treasures in heaven? Because let me tell you, friend, the treasures we store up in heaven, they last for eternity. But if my thin body is the treasure that I am pursuing here in my life on this earth and the treasure I'm believing will get me what it is I ultimately want and crave. Oh, friend, I'm wrong. I'm believing that this life is more than it is. I'm believing that these things I'm fixated on here, these longings I have here are ultimate things, not temporary things. And ultimately, they're things that are not going to give me crowns in heaven right? And there's no scale at the gates of heaven where you weigh in like a Weight Watchers meeting. (laughs) And God says, oh, good, you're at your goal weight. Come on in here. I got something special for you. That's not the way it's going to work. Do I believe that the things I'm investing in here are the most important thing? You know, the word vanity is kind of interesting. And 
people throw around the word vanity in relation to body image issues all the time. And I actually don't think vanity is the best word to use because I think most of us want a thinner body or a better body because we want to be safe and secure, not for vanity reasons. But vanity in and of itself simply means something fleeting. Vain things are things that won't last. And so when you think about it from that definition, boy, the desire for having a thin body, though I don't desire it because I'm vain, I desire it because I want to be safe and secure. But that desire is a vain desire because it won't last. And honestly, friend, even if I could do it, even if I could find some program and magically zap myself into a different body size before that event I've got coming up in a month, even if that would happen, it might not last, right? My body, whoo, it just keeps changing and changing and changing. Because you know why? That's what bodies do. They age and they change. And so back to point one, I might have to grieve a little bit. I'm, I can be sad that my body doesn't look the way it used to. I can be sad that I'm not as young as I used to be. I can be sad that I can't lose weight simply by not eating chocolate chips for a day. <laughs> like I can be sad about all that. Or I can focus with gratitude on what I do have. Like, thank you, Lord, that you've given me this many years. Thank you, Lord, for these other blessings in my life. Thank you, Lord, that I have the opportunity to age. Thank you, God, that you still have things for me to do even as I age. And the final question I have for you is, am I believing that I will be more righteous or loved by God if I change the way my body looks? And this is a really tricky one because I think diet culture's messages have so permeated our churches that we have been taught that thinness is next to godliness. We have been taught that saying no to desserts on the church buffet table equals self-control. We have been taught these messages of diet culture as biblical principles, and they're just not. And I've talked about this a lot on the show before. I've got seven days on food in the 40-day body image workbook. Like it's some of the most, I'm going to say, controversial, edgy, and perhaps encouraging content that I've ever written. My editor at Bethany House was like, whoa, this is really good. Like, I wish we could make this the first seven (laughs) chapters just to get everyone to read this part because it's so good. But I think for too long, we've believed that our righteousness was connected to the way we eat or exercise or a body size. And it's just not true. Friends, you know, I heard Tim Keller explain self-control as self-control is what it took for Jesus to not come down off of that cross. That took the greatest display of self-control because he had to deny what he wanted and face pain and death and not just any pain, excruciating pain. He had to face it because of something he loved more. And that was you and me. That's what self-control is about. Not facing the pain of not eating a brownie because there's something you love more, your thin body. Oh, yikes. Can you see the twisted distortion there, friend? (sighs) Yes, you can take care of your temple. Yes, you can choose to eat foods that make you feel good. Yes, you can move your body. But you can do all those things and you still might not wear the size that you want to wear. And that's okay because God still loves you. And that's okay because you are not more or less righteous than anyone because your body size looks more like a culturally acceptable body size. Friend, if you've got a disordered relationship with food, if you know you're under eating all the time or overeating all the time, and oh, I even hate to use that word because it's so subjective, because most of us have been taught to undereat that we feel like we're overeating. But I, I mean, there are some of you I know that are listening and you legitimately know you have a struggle with food. Here's my hope for you. Get help. Talk to a dietitian. Talk to one of my non-diet dietitian friends who's going to love you well and help you heal your relationship with food, not just tell you how to lose weight or how to gain weight. 
right? Because it's not about the food. It's about all the other things. You can have a healthy relationship with food. You just might need some help to get there. So back to our thesis for today. Ah, what do you do if you just want to be thinner? Oh, friend, I think what you have to do is you have to draw close to the Lord. You have to remember how much he loves you. You have to ask him to help your desires align with his desires. You have to surrender body pride. You have to surrender any of the desire in your heart to get glory for yourself. You have to surrender envy and embrace humility and say, God, all that I have is yours. If I'm not going to have the body size or body shape I want, Lord, just use me anyway. Show me how I can be used of you. Show me how I can make my treasure in heaven. Show me how I can store up crowns there instead of trying to create more crowns here that are just going to fade away. Uh, It's tough stuff, friend. Tough love today as we speak some truth. But I hope you know I want what's best for you. And I want to encourage you (laughs) in what's most important. And that's not your body size. That's how loved you are in Jesus and the truth that he made your body on purpose for a purpose and he has something he wants you to do with it. If this has been encouraging, I hope that you'll share it with a friend because guess what? Every woman we know needs a reminder of where her real value and identity is found. Chances are you know at least five women in your life that want to be thinner. What would it look like to send her this podcast episode and then talk about it. I am all about the conversations. What would it look like if we could start getting our friends to see things in this way? We could maybe defeat diet culture, at least diet culture in the church and start to have real conversation about the things of God that ultimately matter the most. That's what I would love to see. And hey, if this encouraged you, leave a review. I have at least a thousand listeners that have not left a review yet. Are you one of them? If you are one of my thousand listeners who has not left a review and this show encourages you regularly, will you just stop right now? Go to Apple. It's a little confusing. You kind of have to scroll down and you can like leave the stars and then you have to click a thing that says write a review. But leaving that review on either Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts helps me so much because that helps other women find the show. Apple and Spotify then know, oh, this is a good show. We should show it to people. So will you consider doing that for me today? Hey, join the 40-day challenge because I want to get to know you and I want to read the 40-day body image book with you. So let's do that together. Go to improvebodyimage.com. And most of all, I hope something today has helped you stop comparing. Start.